Oh, hello there. Yes, we're often told that we need common sense politics and that we need to, you know, to let the adults in the room get on with things. The problem is that uh, we have neither of those things. Uh, the current hoo-ha over Ulez cameras, I think, is a really good case in point. But there will be fallout from this, which we'll come on to in a second. I'm reminded at the moment with um, Fox News when Trump was attempting to become president for the second time, and they'd confidently predicted he was going to walk it with an even bigger majority. And then suddenly, a little bit after midnight, they had to accept that their reality, which they talked themselves into, was not going to happen. This is part of the problem where we end up with conspiracy theories because people are earnestly will earnestly believe what these political commentators tell them and then when it all goes wrong there must be something wrong with reality. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the stuff around the ULES thing because it really is rather strange. We've got Lawrence Fox who uh, tweets out Chevin Calm admitting that despite what the Conservatives say, they support ULES expansion of scam taxes. Both main political parties have exactly the same policies. Democracy isn't being given a choice between Communist Party A and Communist Party B. Indeed. Now, Lawrence Fox doesn't actually know what communism is, which means he can tweet these things out. He doesn't like being called a fascist, but he's quite happy to call anything he doesn't like communist. And indeed, um, his party bloke, uh, Mr Cox, has been on GB News and Talk TV, I think about... Well, I think he's basically sleeping in the studios at the moment because obviously the last time they've put up candidates who lost their deposits and being against you, Les, is obviously magically not going to happen this time. Um, you've had Jordan Peterson, um, a man who, for some reason, as I've said before, the British press and the British media seem to think is anything other than a, a rather mentally ill human being. There is no climate crisis. There is a crisis of tyrannical fear fear-mongering. Yes, indeed, because he's very worried that there will be laws about the traffic in in London, where he doesn't drive. Yes, and uh, like all libertarians, he hates the idea of people imposing restrictions on where he can go. Presumably, he campaigns against traffic lights. Don't think he does, though. And finally, uh, my favourite one recently, uh, was yesterday, um, was um, Alistair Heath. Uh, a man who believes that this trust should have been given more of a more of a try, but he says London's revolt against Ulez scam is set to shatter politics as we know it. The Tories should earnestly pull out the stops to back Susan Hall, the one woman who can defeat Sadiq Khan. Yes, I'm sure that isn't going to work because any cursory look at the demographics and the voting intentions of London will tell you that there is no way, once again, that the Conservatives are going to win at this, no matter how they try and spin it. OK, they did win the Uxbridge by-election, but as I've pointed out before, that's because all of the Brunel University students had gone home for the summer. That's the reason they run it. Without that, they wouldn't have done. But here they are clutching at these straws, their own policy, government policy, to demand that London does this. It's dictated from Whitehall. And yet here they are clutching at straws. And it will go south for them in the next, next London election. And when it does, their solution will be to get rid of the mayors. Right? They've already changed it from a PR system to a first-past-the-post system in the hope that they could get rid of the mayors because they hate the idea of anyone winning that they don't like, even if it's a centrist like Sadiq Khan. But that's what they'll do. They'll then get rid of the mayors. I've seen pieces, uh, opinion pieces saying, oh, this devolution just isn't working. No, of course it isn't because it isn't going your way. These people hate democracy. They really hate democracy. And yet, magically, they will stand there on their shiny hill, yeah, with their glorious flag fluttering in the breeze, telling you about they're the only stalwart defenders of freedom. Anyway, enough of that. Um, we'll, we'll see where this goes. It should be interesting to see a Ian Duncan Smith, who was supporting Ulez cameras being vandalised, the next time there's any form of protest. My guess is he won't do any interviews other than on stations that won't ask him 
Yeah, but didn't you say something completely different about the ULES cameras? Yeah, because that's the nation, nature of British politics. It doesn't really exist anymore, unfortunately. Anyway, do have a um, quite nice end to the week, I suppose. Stay dry. Hmm.